I find the task of, of summarizing all the lessons that Esther failed to sort of summarize. <laughs> we do it. It's usually a non-job, and, and that's how it turned out. Um, so I will um, mostly say nothing, uh, which I think is appropriate at 5 p.m. Not for a long day. A uh, couple, couple of observations, in a sense, um, as a prelude to um, basically um, I guess, and making some kind of closing statement. And one, one thing that I, I, in some ways, this is a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a day that we went through, which um, I, I, I'm old enough to have been in economics uh, seminars and conferences before GFL, indeed before randomized evaluation uh, and you, uh, sadly, uh, and that all in days when people actually didn't even bother to run many things, they would mostly um, tell you a parable and then assert that that's the way the world works. And, uh, and I think what's remarkable about today, and I, I think for many of you here, because you're not economists and because you're not as old as I am, in fact, you're, and if you're much, much, much. Uh, it's a very unfamiliar world, that, uh, in a sense, because we, what, what, I think what's striking to me, um, so maybe this is not so interesting to you, but it's striking to me about uh, the day we went through, is how much emphasis there is on texture, on process, on detail. I mean, in some ways, we, we, we lived in a world, and I think as economists, we want to live in a world where now these things exist. There, there exists like input called I and output called Y. Uh, why? I don't know why they call it Y in economics, but it's always Y. Uh, and, and that's how you get there. And somehow, what I think is, what is, what I think is, sort of remarkable about the kind of day we went through, partly exactly, uh, I think, made apparent by this of what we call practitioners and what we call. I don't know what the other word was, uh, the non-practitioners, I guess, um, is, uh, people like me, um, is this fact that, in, in a sense, the program itself is conceived not just at the level of some general principle, but as, a, as at the level of a certain set of very concrete steps. I thought the, what was beautiful about the uh, description of the Uganda program Pro, pro project that um, we heard was how detailed the planning of the whole process was and how, how much thought into went into every step of that. Now, that, that's a sort of a, from, from where we come from, I mean, from where I come from, let's say, uh, uh, is that's a complete sh shift in my minds. It's a, it's a way of recognizing and ac acknowledging a set of pieces of information which in a sense have no life in my space. They are not the I and they're not the Y. There's something else. There's a way of actualizing uh, these projects. Now that that's both I think the gift of this whole approach. The fact that we are now taking the reality reality much more seriously, that you know there is a sense in which lots of things fail, not because the I is wrong or the Y is wrong because the the mapping between them was never thought about. So a lot, lots of the way the world proceeds, and I still see this all the time in India, at least uh, where I talk to bureaucrats and implementers, is sort of reflects the fact that they too have bought into that, you know, I term translates into Y view of the world. And you to talk to people and you tell them, well, you know, we have a plan for this. We're going to, uh, we, we have to hire 300, 300 teachers and then we're going to give them some tr tr sensitivity training and then that's going to remove this problem that you're trying to solve, that you're so worried about. And then you, my usual reaction is, you know, how will you hire them? Where are you going to get them? What, 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 what training will you give them? What's the process? You know, why do you think they're going to pay attention to the training? And in some sense, when I ask those questions, the first reaction is, oh, the, that's, that's going to be taken care of. That's, that's, we have a department of training. And it's, it's that step that, in a sense, we are challenging. So in a sense, the effort here is much more radical than I think we sometimes, 
we, we, we don't want to almost, we almost try to be too modest because in the sense we are, we don't want to you know, raise people's hand. But in a sense, the effort here in, is enormously radical. It's enormous radical exactly in this sense. Is we are inviting us as, uh, as a sort of policy people and scholars and, and, um, and government people to think together at a level at which nobody really is used to participating in the conversation. And so this, these conversations that we hear today are unique in a way that I think is, uh, I think that if you, you have to be all, as old as I am to know how unique these conversations are. They didn't exist. And in a sense, in the world, they still don't exist. I mean, you know, you have to, I, uh, my favorite story, I'll repeat one more time for even so if any of you heard this, is I, oh, Esther and I once went to discuss the one of the projects that uh, Rukmini described, the, pro, the UP uh, project on, you know, inspiring volunteer volunteerism in among parents to promote better education with the government of UP and uh, the the woman who currently is I think in jail who was then, then the head of uh, many things in UP uh, there and she brought forward her, all her other experts who were all sitting around the table and we were discussing education so uh, and we naively asked you know these committees that are supposed to monitor the schools, how do you constitute it? So, and uh, the, the woman was sort of the boss, she was kind of, there was a silence, and then she looked to her right and her left, and one of the women, other women, who well, I think there was a director of public instruction primary, sort of suddenly decided she needed to say something, so she said, well, what we do is we, we find the, the the parent of the best student in the school, the parent of the worst student in the school, and the parent of a handicapped student. That's a science. And, uh, and then there's a minute, and, and then I, I sort of, I think, I have awkward, I'm, I'm socially awkward, so I often ask the wrong question. I ask, but you know, you don't have any tests in the school, remember? So how do you find out the best student in the worst school? And then there was a very awkward pause for about 40 seconds, because and then the woman, this woman who, Despite her, you know, you know, the, who is now in prison, but the world has many other gifts. We figured out this was not a good conversation, and she stopped it immediately, moved the conversation to something. It's clear that this was a classic example of the way uh, policy thinking happens. It happens without really even taking account of the other policy thinking that you already done. So this, this was completely. She made up a set of rules without thinking of other rules she had made up. And that, that particular form of thinking where policy happens in some sense in the abstract where, you know, there are many sort of counters here and there which you manipulate into some location and then they aggregate into an outcome is a way that I think is being challenged here. I think in that sense, I think we are, I feel like, I think we are here at, at some level at a, at a point which could turn out to be critical in history. I, I do feel I don't want to, and I don't think this is, this is me or uh, Esther even or anybody else in JPAL specifically. It's, I think, a recognition collective. That's why I feel all of you are here. That's why I think we are all together. That we are frustration with policy that gets made in that other way of the I that maps into the Y and then really not recognizing the fact that so many of the details and some of the way we do things matter and sort of figuring out which ways we do things do matter and which ones don't matter, that whole process in a sense we are going through to get through today. The fact that that process is not universal. That, and in some sense I think that's bigger than randomized evaluations. It is randomized evaluations is a tool. It's a way of looking at policy questions, a way of very effective way of answering it. But it's in a sense is a prior fact, which is that you need to to get to randomized evaluations and we need to look at data, we need to think about the question. And I mean really literally that. I, I feel like the many policy questions are decided just like this, you know, the best student and the worst worst student committee without a moment's thought. And I think that that particular mode of of operating, of taking evidence seriously, even if it's not from randomized evidence, just just taking the I active the attitude towards evidence that in this is reflected. Randomized evaluation is just a wonderful and very uh, 
I think, very effective tool for delivering it. And it has this one unique characteristic, which I think is, I think is, was very apparent from several of the descriptions, especially I think Bruno's, Bruno made this point earlier, which is that it, it has this ability to surprise us, precisely because it doesn't come out of a narrative that's a grand narrative of some I that maps into some Y, then rather than, okay, well, why don't we try this little thing and that little thing? And, and I think Bruno made the point that nobody was expecting this teacher, parents meeting teachers three times a year to have the transformative impact it had. And indeed, if you asked any policymaker, they would have said, well, if, you know, if it were the case that they were making a judgment in the abstract, I think they would have all said, no, that's not going to work. So nobody would have ever found out. It's precisely this fact that we have a tool which is, allows us to ask these unlikely and sometimes um, potentially silly questions, which gives it its enormous power. But I think it's worth, but I think the broader point is that this is this view of looking at policy, the way of, this way of doing policy as something that comes out of thinking about the detail, thinking about what the facts are. we know, thinking about what the ways we can tease out the evidence, thinking about setting up the experiment that will answer the specific question. That's, that's just a mindset that I think is incredibly powerful. And I think, I think you, all of you recognize that. You're here because of that. And I think that, in a sense, this has the potential to transform of the way the policy is made. And I, 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 mean, I mean that entirely. I, I, mean, I, I, I obviously, uh, you know, I am part of JPL, and I would love JPL to have a seat at it on it in history. So I, I would love to believe it. But I think she's true. And, uh, and, uh, and in that sense, I feel I'm incredibly excited uh, to be part of this process, uh, be part of days like this where I learn a million things, um, be a part of the course that's starting tomorrow, be a part of a process where, where all of you are with us and we are with you, and we all learn about a way of doing things which starts exactly moving us away from these very general and abstract principles that guide, guide policy thinking so much and so far. And it, and I I'm I I guess that this is I have no more to say than to say that I'm very grateful and honored that you're all with here with us and very excited that we will go somewhere very exciting. And thank you very much.